Hi, Mini Beanies, and welcome to our podcast. If you enjoy some of the songs you hear in our stories, then head to our YouTube channel. It's full of music videos so you can sing and dance along with us. They're lots of fun. And there's a lot of different dances and nursery rhymes too. Just head to youtube.com slash at the beanies. Now on with the show. Hi, Hi Mini Beanies. It's the Beanies here. That means you're with Laura, Mim and Michael. Today we're going to meet some strange animals. Go to the zoo. And learn why some animals look the way they do. Are you ready, Mini Beanies? Let's, Let's go. go. Beanies. Today we're at the zoo. I love the zoo. I get to see the monkeys. I can't wait to catch up on all the monkey gossip. I wonder if Mr. Teeny knows that Mojo stole his banana. I love seeing the seals. How they swim so fast and the way they jump out of the water. Also, they have big moustache whiskers. Yes, I'll have another fishy thank you, waiter. <laughs> <laughs> I love seeing the elephants. Look at them. Big ears. Big stampy feet. Cute little tail. And their trunk. I heard that their trunk can actually shoot poison arrows. <gasps> really? Oh, we should be careful. That trunk is pointed right at us. <gasps> oh, Laura, calm down. It's not loaded. How do you know that, Mim? That elephant could sneeze and send a poison arrow right at us. I wonder why they don't have a cage over them. Can't elephants fly away by flapping their ears? Mm, they look too big to fly. Maybe they need a high place to jump off to get going. Hmm. Isn't the zoo fun, Beanies? So many animals from all around the world. It's a great place to learn about them, especially the flying poison arrow elephant. Hey, wait, there's a sign with some information about elephants. Hmm. Anything about flying? Um, no. What about shooting poison darts out of their trunks? No, nothing about that either. I don't think they do either of those things. Oh, it says here that there's a special elephant presentation starting soon. Ooh. Hey, let's find a seat. Hey, guys, while we wait for the presentation to start, I have a story about a special zoo. Would you like to hear it? Yes, yes please. please. A long time ago, there was a travelling show called the Topsy Turvy Extravaganza. It was in a small tent and would travel from town to town, bringing all sorts of strange animals with it. Its owner was the magnificent Steve. Roll up, roll up, witness the wondrous and weird. See the strange animals like you have never seen before. Come one, come all, to the Topsy Turvy Extravaganza. No, oh, yes, one, please. Welcome, welcome. Come inside and let me show you animals as you have never seen. But let me ask you, are you familiar with the duck? Uh, yes. I would think so. You do, hmm? And what makes a duck a duck? Oh, um, uh, uh, they quack? That's right. What else? Oh, this is fun. Um, they have a duck's bill? That's correct. And what else? They have webbed feet. Yes. Now, imagine in your head the shape of a beak and webbed feet. I think I can do that. Wait, let me put my thinking cap on. There we go. Great. Now I want you to think of a beaver. Ooh, OK. What do they look like? Mm, they're small and fluffy, four legs, swim a lot. That's right. Now, what I have to show you here is one of the rarest animal oddities you will ever see. Oh, lucky me. Yes, quite. Behold, the body of a beaver with the bill of a duck and webbed feet. The duck beaver. Did you see its feet? That's right. Its bill is so strong that it can crush rock. And at precisely midnight every night, it sings Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. Really? Can I see? No. The topsy-turvy extravaganza would travel all around the world. Gather round, everyone. But beware, for now I present to you an incredibly dangerous animal. 
No, I love danger. Me too. Good thing I brought our armor along. Behold, it hops, it eats grass, it has big ears. A rabbit! A man-eating rabbit! Close, for this is no ordinary rabbit. When it stands tall, it can be seven foot high, and when it hops, it jumps 20 feet at a time. <gasps> Why, that's 6.096 meters! Its long tail is so strong that it can lean back and hold itself up, leaving its powerful legs to kick anyone that is brave enough to come close. Good thing we're behind this small rope barrier. Yes. And it can recite the whole alphabet. Behold, the rare southern giant rabbit man. <gasps> Look at its cute ears. Wow. It's, a bit scary. it's a big rabbit man. Mm, big rabbit man. One day, the topsy-turvy extravaganza came into a new town. In that town was a very smart professor that knew lots about different animals. Professor Paps. Walking through town, Professor Paps saw a tent with a big sign on top. Topsy-turvy extravaganza. How interesting. You there. You seem like you'd want to see some of the most interestingly interesting animals that ever made someone go, how very interesting. How very interesting. I mean, yes, I do study animals after all. Do you? Well, come in and witness the greatest collection of animals you have ever seen. Steve took Professor Pat into the topsy-turvy extravaganza and started the show. I now ask the audience, what has feathers, walks but rarely flies, and lays eggs? A chicken? A man-eating chicken. Yes, but what if the chicken was six feet tall? I present to you the rare Polynesian giant chicken. Look at the ground. It must be big eggs. Everyone in the crowd was amazed at the animal they had never seen before, except one. Professor Pats. She stood up out of her seat and yelled over the top. Excuse me! That's not a Polynesian giant chicken. Oh! <gasps> what did she say? What did she say? She said it's not a, it's a man eating. Excuse, Excuse me? me? How, How would, would you, you know? Because that giant chicken is an emu. I thought it was, but now well, I don't She seems anymore. very smart, doesn't she? A what? An emu, sir. Second largest living flightless bird from Australia. It appears that you don't know anything about your rare animals. Oh, yeah? Think you know it all, huh? What about this? The rare duck beaver. Oh, the oh, duck beaver is so oh, rare. The duck rare. beaver. Wrong again, Steve. That is a platypus. Also from Australia, the platypus is a semi-aquatic egg-laying mammal. Think you're so fancy with your big words, huh? What about this? The southern giant rabbit man. All eyes turned back to Professor Pats to see what she had to say. Professor Pats walked out of her seat and down into the ring with the magnificent Steve. Sorry, Steve, but what you have here is an eastern grey kangaroo. Another animal from Australia. And luckily for you, Steve, this one's quite friendly. (gasps) Who's a good girl? Magnificent Steve was stunned, and so was the audience, who were still looking on with wonder. Then someone in the crowd called out... Tell us more! Yeah, tell us more! Yeah, tell us more! more. more. Yeah, what? Professor Pats turned to Steve. Steve... Do you mind if I take it from here? Maybe you can learn a thing or two about these animals that are very far from their home. Of course. How silly of me. I don't know anything about these animals. I really thought I had the only ones. That's all right, Steve. But it's very dangerous for you to keep these animals if you don't know anything about them. You could hurt them. Or they could hurt you. Professor Pats then turned to the whole audience. Now, who here would like to know the real facts about these beautiful animals? 
Me, 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 me. Yes. I want yes. to I want to read facts. Go on, Ooh, yeah, go tell on, me tell more us. about the yeah, I don't want to be fake. fake news. The Australian grey kangaroo is the only large animal to use hopping as a way to move about. You can see this one here is a female because of its pouch. Professor Pats then taught Magnificent Steve all about the animals at the Topsy Turvy Extravaganza. That way, Steve could properly look after his animals, give them a good home, and teach other people about them. Together, they started one of the greatest zoos in the world, the Topsy Turvy Zoo. The end. It's time to close your eyes and wake your imagination. And picture in your head a, a topsy turvy animal. What shape is your animal? Is it short and tubby or tall with long legs? How does it move? Does it fly or run and jump? What colour is it? Is it shiny with all the colours of the rainbow or dark and blends in with the forest? Well done, Mini Beanies. You made a, a topsy turvy animal. animal. Now, time for a song. Being an elecorn, being an elecorn, being an elecorn, everybody freeze Ooh. at the, the Topsy Turvy Zoo. I'm being a crocodile, being a crocodile, being a flamingo, being a flamingo, being a crocodile, being a crocodile. Being Being a crocodile, being a crocodile, being a crocodile, being a crocodile, everybody freeze at the Topsy Turvy Zoo. I'm being an antelope, being an antelope, being an octopus, being an octopus, being an antelope, being an antelope, being an octopus, being an octopus. Why can't we be both? Being an octolope, being an octolope, being an octolope, everybody freeze at the Topsy Turvy Zoo. Being a gorilla fly, being a gorilla fly, being a gorilla fly, everybody freeze. Careful. At the Topsy Turvy Zoo. Topsy Turvy Zoo will soon begin its elephant presentation. Please take a seat. Hey, I didn't know the Topsy Turvy Zoo started like that, Laura. Yep, Professor Pats and Magnificent Steve kept looking after animals and teaching anyone who came along to the zoo. Pretty cool, huh? How funny that Steve thought the platypus was a duck beaver. And the emu was a giant chicken. <laughs> yeah. I suppose all the animals in Australia are pretty unique. I wonder why Australian animals are so special. I know someone who can tell us why. Professor, Professor Know-It-All. Hello, beanies. Great day for the zoo, isn't it? My favourite's the turtles. Oh, hi, Professor. Hey, 
why are all the animals in Australia so unique and different? Yeah, like there isn't anything like the kangaroo anywhere else. Or the platypus. That's a very good question. Australia is a big island surrounded by the sea. That makes it very hard for the animals to go anywhere else. Over a very long period of time, all of the animals that stayed in Australia changed and became more and more unique to the rest of the world. This is called evolution. Can you say that with me? Evolution. Evolution. Over a long period of time, animals change and evolve. Eventually, you end up with animals like the spiky echidna, or the platypus, or koala. Whoa! Because of the sea that surrounds us, those animals can't go wandering off to other parts of the world. And that is why they are only found here. Cool. cool! There's many places around the world that have their own unique and special animals. That is why we have to look after them and where they live. Otherwise, we might lose those animals forever. Wow. Imagine never seeing the koala ever again. Or the elephant? Hmm. Oh, that reminds me. I'm due for the presentation. Pardon me, beanies. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Topsy Turvy Zoo. I'm Professor Know It All here to teach you all about elephants. Bye, mini beanies. Maybe next time you go to the zoo, you can learn about a new animal. Tata koala. Or see the elephants. Did you like today's podcast? Want even more? Well, in the show notes, you'll find links to things like worksheets to complete about the episode, colouring in pages, dance along videos to the song, and all sorts of fun stuff. How cool! Can't wait to see what you create, mini beanies! The Beanies Beautiful Tunes were brought to you by The Beanies and the magnificent music wizard, James Court. Ah, ah, ah.